This is the Doordarshan Kendra Shillong and today we have with us Professor Alok Kumar Chakrawal who is the Vice Chancellor of Guru Ghasidas Vishwavidyale Bilaspur. Thank you sir for agreeing for this interview. We are honored and privileged indeed to have you for this discussion on National Education Policy 2020. Firstly, I would like to ask you about the importance of education in today's world and as to how can it mold an individual? Uh, this is a wonderful question. Without education, we are nothing. So education is the basic thing to uh, build an individual to uh, go according to the NEP 2020 as NEP 2020 talks about well-rounded graduates. So education is responsible for development of a responsible citizen in the society. So uh, if good education is there, certainly our youth will be participating in nation building and making this country a pride of the world and India will be becoming a knowledge superpower with the help of a good education in the country. How education can be improved in classrooms using technology? Well, technology is uh, coming in a very big way and uh, you cannot avoid technology. You might have seen the recent pandemic era where uh, people were sitting in the home and you know lot of activities was going on in terms of education and uh, online education started taking the help of uh, various online platforms meeting platforms like zoom meet and many other uh, kind of you know uh, teller med online uh, technological advances so technology is something which is going to make education available anywhere from anywhere so it doesn't matter that whether you are in india or in abroad or in one city or the other city if you want to acquire the knowledge with the help of technology you can get it from anywhere and that is the beauty of technology that it is making education inclusive for everybody from kashmir to kanyakumari and from gujarat to anuranchal pradesh everybody is having having the equality and equity and quality of the education in the way and in manner of the inclusion of the education. So technology is making it possible and that is why our government of India has announced digital university which will be totally based on the technology and ministry of education and ministry of uh, uh, electronics and information technology is also helping in that. So technology you cannot think of education without technology. Technology is making things available, technology is making things easy, technology is making things possible because you can get all information in real times and visualize things you know very practically. So that way technology is going to help the entire Indian education system to make India a wonderful country. So what we can say is that technology has indeed strengthened the educational process. Of course yes. The national education policy 2020 also touches upon Indian thought and philosophy. How can this be incorporated with modern teaching? Let me tell you uh, very first thing that national education policy 2020 is itself a revolutionary document. An entire world is looking at India how this NEP 2020 is going to be implemented. NEP 2020 talks about IKS that is Indian knowledge system. Indian knowledge system somehow has been ignored uh, by the previous uh, not completely but marginally that has been ignored. So this NEP 2020 talks about IKS also. We are concentrating upon Indian knowledge system and as per the Indian knowledge system our syllabi, our syllabus, the curricula everything is reframed and we are trying to bring in our like you know our charak sahita our um, vedic mathematics uh, our hindu studies our knowledge our culture our traditions everything is to be is is being brought in the mainstream for the uh, you know regular uh, syllabi and curriculum of uh, the colleges and universities at the same time this national education policy talks about 
experiential learning NEP 2020 says up to 50% learning should be experiential not only theory teaching not only classroom teaching but the student has to go in the practical field say for example a student is learning LLB courses legal courses now the teacher is teaching in the classroom what is Indian penal code what is taught what is evidence what is you know contract act what is Indian uh, company sect what is business law and what is what are the jurisprudence but at the same time the student will have to go and uh, sit in the courts will have to go and work with the you know lawyers and practicing advocates and by that way he'll be having experiential learning same way in engineering and technology say if a mechanical engineer or the civil engineer is there he is studying civil engineering so he has to go on the construction site and see how the things are actually happening of course we are having certain laboratories where the students are learning but we are dedicating more time to the practical and experiential learning which will make our graduates more confident and more reliable and more employable so this is the target of national education policy 2020 and here we are offering the true interdisciplinary kind of options to the students now this is a kind of a cafeteria approach say if a, 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 for example an engineering student wants to study music he has an interest in music and if he is not being offered okay he this NEP 2020 gives the liberty that the student of engineering can go for Visharat can learn the music or performing arts and the credit appropriate credit will be given to that and that credit will be added to his calculation of final degree uh, certification so and academic bank of credit which is the beauty of NEP 2020 and multiple entry and exit see in India earlier this, pro this provision was not there if you are living after one year your one year is being spoiled and you will have to start your uh, entire study afresh from the scratch but now NEP 2020 allows to exit from your studies and take entry in the study at any time as per your comfort and as per your convenience say for example you have studied you know four courses uh, in a stretch in one semester and after that if you want to go in the field and work for example you are studying biotechnology you are studying radiology and you have learned certain kind of qualities and in the meantime if you want to go and practice in the field if you want to earn some money you go and earn the money and after earning the money you can come back again take again admission and your credits will be deposited in the, in the academic bank of credit which is hosted by the digi locker so say for example if you have to uh, earn 150 credits for uh, earning a graduation degree so the moment you have uh, you know accumulated 150 160 credits for your graduation you will be requesting your university to redeem redeem those credits and you will be getting a degree of graduation now uh, at the same time, say for example, if you want to study economics from Delhi School of Economics, if you want to study uh, 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 fashion designing from the National Institute of Fashion Technology, so you can uh, you know learn and earn all these courses from different institute, and you you can club all your credits in one program and in one you know kind of graduation degree and you'll be earning a degree from different institutes and that is that time you know if you have a problem of you know deciding what will be your uh, branch of study maybe you know sometimes people are getting confused about that okay whether it has to be called arts or commerce or science or technology for that also we are having enough you know provisions that this degree will be called bachelor of liberal education or it will be decided on the basis of majority of the subject if you are having majority of the subject from technology it can be called btech if you are having majority of subjects in the science you can go it can be called as bachelor of science so depending upon your majority of the subject so NEP 2020 is certainly going to concentrate and target upon inclusion of the students so our target is that to enhance our GR ratio gross uh, uh, enrollment ratio up to 50% by 2035 so this way because you know academic bank of credit gives 20% additional enrollment so any university any program any course can enroll 20% additional students at the same time this national education policy and NEP 2020 and academic bank of credit allows up to 40 percent online courses so you can earn your credits from MOOCs and Swayam and Swayam Prabha these online resources you can earn so this 
national education policy is in fact a kind of transformation of our education system especially in the higher education system of course in the primary and secondary and higher secondary also but since i am concentrating upon higher education so i am telling you that this is going to make a kind of drastic change in our education system and certain changes have already taken place because majority of the more than 100 universities have implemented four year degree program and those degree programs will be either in the honors or will be a research program so after four year degree research program a student can directly get enrolled in the phd programs so these are wonderful kind of you know and at the same time so in academic bank of credit once you are getting your self enrolled this enrollment will last for seven years and there may be you know further relaxations also government and policy makers are thinking about that that what kind of positive changes can be done in that what role does life skills have in education and its processes in fact that was the need of the r and that is why life skills have been included even from the schooling system we are including skill based programs skill based you know curricula skill based course you know um, um, courses in our education system it is not only theory based things now say for example weaving or uh, for example stitching or you know farming or you know making certain you know handicrafts and at the same time you know uh, 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 for leading life whatever occupations vocations skills you need everything is included here and earlier credits were not given for that now we are giving credit for each and everything whatever you are learning during your schooling and college period so you are spending certain time you are learning now national curriculum framework we have decided very clearly one credit will be given for 15 hours of direct teaching right one credit will be given for 30 hours of practical work one credit will be given for uh, a kind of experiential learning or you know field working from 40 to 45 hours so we say for example a boy or girl is learning you know rural technology they are going in the fields and learning you know farming or something rural kind of things so they will be given credit for that what they are doing there and here we are giving more stress upon assessment rather than evaluation we will see so these these all things are the based on learning outcomes whether you are learning things or not abilities are coming in you or not you know it's not only passing the examination your actual ability is also assessed by your teachers and peers and your uh, mentors who are you know uh, giving all kind of trainings to you so this life skills have a major role to play so the ultimate objective of national education policy 2020 that to produce well-rounded graduates now how well-rounded graduates will come out until and unless he is going to learn about life skills he is not a complete graduate so earlier the situation was that even after graduation the students who are not getting employed or they were not capable of earning their livelihoods now after completion of graduate graduation degree or a diploma or a certificate a student will be capable of learning earning his livelihood he will be financially economically professionally and socially sound enough to lead his life successfully and he will not be a an dependent guy on his parents for you know seeking uh, for getting his basic needs and requirements and here this education policy talks about learning uh, along with earning now you are working along with your uh, uh, learning so say for example you are uh, you know earning you are going to a college you have certain time you have certain extra time to work you are going with the professionals you are working with doctors chartered accountants businessman industry small and tiny industry professionals and artisans performers and along with the, all these things you are earning something so you are not free your complete 24 by 7 your planning is there this education policy talks about a complete overall development of an individual in what way can school education be restructured using national education policy 2020? Indeed, it is being restructured. See, uh, we have included organ bodies and, you know, midday meals and everything in our schooling system. And we are concerned. This is the first education policy which talks about health, health of the kids. 
so you know from the uh, age of three years onwards the government is making sure that they are given proper nutrition and kind of food intake which is going to make them physically healthy also so a physical healthy mind will have a good healthy mind uh, uh, physical health will keep a good mind in them and that will be uh, giving a good growth and learning among the students so our curriculum is being developed in such a manner uh, in the light of NEP 2020 that our kids are going to get the best education at primary level at secondary level and at si higher secondary level the four year integrated BIT has been mentioned in the policy. How is this going to benefit education as a whole? See, in fact, we need good teachers to produce good students. Now, at certain levels, there are, you know, training of the teachers. But at, we need more qualified teachers and in integrated and intensified manner. So four year integrated, you know, teacher education, it means, you know, there were options after doing graduation, the students were opting for, you know, uh, BA degree. So one year or two year de BA degree was going on. Now, from the very beginning, after 12th, 10 plus 2, uh, or, you know, um, uh, as per the new guidelines, uh, we have given a new structure. So, after 12th, the student is very clear that he or she is going to opt his career as a teacher. So, from the day one, he is entering into system where he is his mind and his entire skills are being groomed and grown and trained in such a fashion that after four years, he will be a complete teacher. So, that is going to help our Indian education system that will be getting better qualified and trained teacher which are going to help our education system a very qualitatively progressing in nation building. Can you talk a little about the National Research Foundation as pointed out by National Education Policy 2020? I think we are going to have very soon this uh, National Research Foundation and National Research Foundation is targeted to uh, uh, bring a culture of research in the country, one thing, and whatever researches are happening in the country, that should be for nation building and for resolving the issues of nation. Any research for any topic will not uh, be promoted or the intention is not to promote useless researches. The researches which are going to solve the actual problems of the nation. Whether it is related to industry, whether it is related to education, whether it is related to society or whether it is related, related to economy or the industry. So all researches will be contributing to some causes of the nation. So National Research Foundation will fund those researches which are uh, certainly going to uh, make India is a be better country in terms of economy, in terms of education, in terms of knowledge. Why is professional education important? Professional education is important indeed because of many reasons. The first reason is that India is a big country. We need medical professionals, we need legal professionals, we need uh, engineering professionals, we need pharmacist professionals. And Indian professionals are regarded the best in the world. So professional education has to be regulated professional education has to be monitored professional education is needed to qualitatively enhanced and increased for producing big number of professionals for supplying the need of nation as well as the world indian professionals are spreading across the globe and they are in very high demand whether it is us whether it is Gulf, whether it is Europe, whether it is Southeast Asian countries, you will find Indians everywhere. So for that reason, uh, all professional educations are uh, needed to be enhanced looking into the requirement of local as well as global needs. India is part of uh, the agreement of GATS, General Agreement on Trade in Services. Now, General Agreement on Trade in Services 
talks about movement of qualified professionals from one country to another country. And India is very much taking benefit of this and our Indian people are bringing lot of exchequer from foreign countries to India. So economically also this is very much important. What's your take on adult education and lifelong learning? See, uh, uh, there are many people in the country who are not able to complete their formal education, even primary, secondary or, you know, higher secondary or even higher education. So lifelong learning is needed. As you see in the global scenario, the developed countries are having lifelong learning system and adult education is practiced being in India for a pretty long time, but effectiveness is more important. And in past we see, we can analyze adult learning was not that much effectively done. But national education policy has given all kind of, you know, platforms and all kind of, you know, uh, uh, canvas uh, for getting better adult education and lifelong learning. There is no age barrier. And I think for making India a world guru in terms of knowledge as well as economically, we need to promote adult education and lifelong learning. Why is promotion of Indian languages, arts and culture so very important? See, India's uh, population is too big. We are producing every year the population equal to Australia. 2.5 crore people are added every year. 140 crores people living in India. India is having almost 250 languages every day spoken. We are, we are having, you know, 23, 24 languages identified by the national bodies to be translated or you know a standard textbook so here national languages we call that all indian languages are national languages whether it is bangla whether it is tamil whether it is telugu whether it is hindi gujarati marathi bangla any language and you know ad see the, the science and research says that a child will learn better in his or her mother tongue so if indian languages are promoted knowledge will be shifted and transferred and transformed and transmitted very fast and for that reason if you really see like you know most of the developed countries france is teaching in french germans are being ger taught in german japanese are taught in J japanese russians are taught in uh, russians very few countries are you know slave of english I don't uh, oppose English. English is I like right now. I'm also talking in English. English as a language, you can take it, but it should not be a kind of barrier for a learner. If a if a student wants to learn in Odia or Assami or Bangla or Kashmiri, he should be given all kind of facility to learn in the and as you asked previously that how technology is going to help now technology is giving you all kind of help to translate any language to any language. Huh? So, education is available in all languages and if we are promoting regional languages, that will help our student to learn and groom better in their respective field. Why is strengthening of Central Advisory Board of Education, CABE, very important? See, uh, strengthening is important because of the reason I tell you, because this CAB will include a big stalwarts and, you know, learned and scholar people from their respective field. And they know need of the future. They will get, give a guiding principle in which, in which direction and in what direction the edu education should move. And for that reason, giving, you know, a kind of, you know, a standard guideline, a very qualitative guideline, this advisory is needed. Affordable and quality education is the need of the hour. Why? See, India, as I told you, is a big country, right? Uh, right now, uh, more than four crore people, students are uh, learning and studying in higher education, right? If you take it to the 50%, accord, approximately seven to eight crore students will fall in higher education. So eight crore people teaching, everybody cannot afford high fees of private sector, you know, organizations, right? And for that reason, we need cheaper and affordable education. And I, I tell you, in India, education is the cheapest compared to 
any other developed countries or developing country and for teaching and you know disseminating our responsibilities and for giving you know quality education affordable education is needed and for that reason only online courses online resources and kind of you know uh, uh, digital universities are being promoted government is planning to you know launch big number of uh, television channels for education to make it you know very cheaper and very you know uh, insignificantly uh, you know uh, uh, nominal cost for the uh, aspirants of education in all segments primary secondary higher education secondary and you know up to 12th standard government supporting government is supporting all kind of educational uh, things to the students so uh, government is adding all these things in higher education also government is giving a lot of support financial support in terms of you know giving affordable and cheaper education thank you sir for your valuable inputs on national education policy 2020 we hope that this discussion has been fruitful and has helped in clearing the doubts in the minds of the people regarding the national education policy 2020